What's up and welcome to Path to Harrison. I am joined today by Curtis Ofori. Curtis Ofori finds an opening. So Curtis, what are you the most excited about going back to Wappingers Falls, New York? I'm excited to see my town, nice little family community. I'm ready to go back. Let's go check it out. So Curtis, we are here at Airport Field yes. where you spent years playing right here on this field. Mm -hmm. What are the emotions coming to you right now being back? Man, I'm just, I feel happy being back here. A lot of memories, a lot of emotions coming back. I'm just happy to be here. Absolutely, me too, and it's such a beautiful day. Yes. We were talking to your dad off camera before. Mm -hmm. By the way, you are one of six boys, yeah. which is Amazing, and we'll get to that. But you were here at a young age of three years old watching one of your older brothers play soccer when the ball came to you and you kicked it in a way that your dad immediately noticed the talent at such a young age. Can you tell me about some of your earliest memories playing the sport? I just remember like being within the midst of a bunch of kids, like goals, little goals on each side, just kind of just doing what we want. I remember like parents here yelling like, oh, you're going the wrong way, scoring this goal, scoring that goal. But, you know, I think that from an early age, my parents believed in me and saw that I had talent. And, like, coming up through Oppingers, like, I had, I was always playing up. I was always, like, kind of, like, the main man, I want to say. But, <laughs> so I, I think that just being back here just, once again, just brings back a lot of memories. Yeah, absolutely, because you've been here basically your whole life. Yeah. So your dad was like, wait a second. He's three. Where did he learn how to do this? I need to step in and help him out with his craft. Yeah. And obviously he did. You were just saying how you scored probably thousands of goals in some of these goals yeah. behind us now. Oh yeah, back then I used to play a striker, so I used to score a bunch of bunch of goals in these nets. And then you had the extra support from your dad being coach when you played here with Wappinger Lightning. So did that force you to sort of play at a higher level because of your dad being the coach, or did you want to automatically sort of play to a higher level? I feel like my dad had like a lot of, a lot of knowledge, so I always like kind of, sometimes it took a while, but I always kind of like kind of took his lessons in, took like what he was teaching me in, and sometimes like we butt heads and stuff like that, but I think that was like a big part of my development coming up here. It really taught me how like all the basics, how to learn the game pretty much, and I owe a lot to him. A soccer household, but a soccer, soccer town. Wappingers oh, yeah. Falls. Obviously, it's no secret Tyler Adams is yep. from here. Do you find yourself or others sort of comparing you to his level of play? Not quite yet, but they kind of see the the similarities between our paths, you know, growing up here, being the same thing, kind of joining Rebels at a young age, the commute and everything. And, like, I'm getting a lot of comparisons because now being with the first team, like, they're seeing me make the next step, so. It's good to like have someone you could idolize who was from your town, who you kind of saw make the same steps that you did growing up. Yeah, developing multiple pro soccer players. Yeah. What do you think makes Wappingers Falls so special and so unique when it comes to the passion and love for soccer? There's a lot of talent here, and like, there's 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 no more passion than here. Like, families come out. It's not only the players. Like, they start at a young age from three. Like, people grow love for the game. So I think that's like one of the main reasons why. Yeah, definitely. So let's talk about when you went from striker to more of a defensive position. Tell me about that and how you made that transition. I did a trip with this program called PDP. I think now it's called an NCE Soccer. And they put me in, in defense. We were playing like a little 9v9 tournament. And I, I was finding myself playing kind of center back. And I was like, this is, this is different. But when I made my first tackle, I was like, I kind of like it. I kind of <laughs> like this. But then I would always still get the ball from the back and dribble up all by myself, score goals still. So then as I was transitioning, I was like, what's a position that I could do both and kind of like make good tackles, play defense, but also still have the ability to go forward. And that's where I fell in love and fullback. Wow, so there's nothing you can't do. You're exploring all the different positions. You, I won't toot your horn but obviously you're a man of great talents. Yes. <laughs> so talk to me about, because I just have to know logistically, how did you get from this field to going internationally to then, you know, joining with the academy? How did that happen for you? Yeah, so I was playing here till I was like seven, eight, and then I joined this local club team, travel team called Quick Strike. And then during Quick Strike, I was playing like little, like a select 
programs, so like, like I said, the PDP, and that's when I went on the Italy trip. And after I came back from the Italy trip, we went to like an RDS camp, like some little at Teaneck, I'm pretty sure. It's kind of just pick up. And one of the scout at Rebels came up to him wow. and was like, yeah, is this your son? He's like, oh no, that's my, that's my friend's son. And he's like, he's really talented. I think we wanted to see him at, get a, a trial at Rebel Academy. And from there we were questionable because like, we weren't sure if we could kind of schedule it in with our busy schedule. So we just went down. I was like, let's give it a try. We went down and trials were good. I made the team. And then from there, like as a family, we all sat down. We were like, yeah, do we really want to do this? Because it's a big sacrifice to all of us, you know, traveling an hour and a half there, hour and a half back. He's like, okay, let's try it out for the first year, see how we all deal with it. And I'm, I'm happy we did that because now, like, it puts us in a great spot. Everyone here loves Red Bulls, so it's great. It's amazing, and the dedication and skill from you, but also your entire family mm -hmm. deciding as a team to make it work to support you. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Like you said, Wappingers Falls, it just seems to breed, <laughs> you know, these incredible players because of the support from the community, mm -hmm. and that is so awesome. So now you're in the academy, it's 2017, you're playing with U13, so tell me about what is a day in the life for you? Yeah, day in the life was wake up at like six, go to school till around three o'clock, come home, get some homework done, and then right when my dad got home around four o'clock, five, straight back into the car, hour and a half drive straight to Jersey, and then I come home around maybe 11.30, 11 o'clock, usually in that car ride home, I'm dead asleep, mm. tired from the day, and then it kind of just kept on like that for a few years until I could start driving myself. What are some key memories that you have from your time in the academy? Um, you know, a lot of the friendships I've made, really, that are still here to this day. And playing-wise, I remember my U15 year, like, our team was, like, one of the best in the country. We only lost one game that year. And, like, going to GA Cubs as U15, like, a lot of confidence in our team. And we qualified a minute out the group, and then, luckily, that's when COVID hit. So we never had the chance to play last game of the tournament. But that was, like, kind of my, my best memory. And then, obviously, like, just the friends I've made throughout the experience. You know, lifelong friends. Oh, absolutely. And so my sister's your age, 17 years old, just graduated high school. I know you did too. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. When you signed RB2, you were 15 years old and 122 days old. Did you know that, by the way? Yes, 15, I did. 15, 100. I did, I did, I did. <laughs> the youngest Academy signing. So we're going to wrap it up here. We're going to go to your house. We're going to talk a little bit to your family. Yep. Get to know your family life a little better. So are you ready? I'm ready. Let's get it. All right, let's do it. So Curtis, one of his six boys. I'm just yeah. so fascinated about learning what that was like growing up. Uh, it was a it was a roller coaster, really. Like, I mean, I appreciate all of them, but I just know they got on my nerves. Like, we had lots of lots of brother fights, just too much, too many guys in one little house, <laughs> and it was just like, it was just pure chaos. I feel bad for my parents sometimes. I gotta be honest with you. I'm coming from one of three girls, and. I think that the energy is even between six boys and three girls. It's a lot on both ends, but at the end of the day, it's all about just love and support mm -hmm. and all of that. And talking about love and support and all of that, your dad, how is it living with your coach? Because your dad was your coach for Wappinger Lightning. What was that like? Non-stop soccer talk, <laughs> non-stop. You come home after games. There would be some times where like, we would just butt heads completely, like mm. going back, going back and forth just hours and hours and hours going back and forth. But, you know, just, it taught us, see, I get to see both perspectives and it gave me an overall better view of the game, so. Yeah. What were some of the other sports and other activities you guys did together? So, 3v3 tackle football, every once in a while, I was this little tiny guy getting tackled by, <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't care, getting tackled by all my brothers, like way older and made me who I am today. Also, we love Uno. Mm. Card games. Me too. It's the best. Big cheaters. Oh no! Big cheaters. Big cheaters. <laughs> but only in Uno. Only in only Uno. Uno. <laughs> only only in Uno. So talk to me about a memory that you have with your mom, because obviously she was maybe not playing the sports with you guys, but she was always there supporting you. So I think the most memories I have of my mom are just kind of just going and sitting in a room, just talking for hours and hours. It's not even about not even about soccer, just kind of about everything else going on, because. She was like my emotional support right there. Cause 
my dad all being on soccer, my brothers, but my mom would be the one to kind of sit me down in room, just make sure everything's okay. And I think that those are like the most moments that I cherish with her because you don't always get that with your, with your parents. And I just, I'm happy to have someone I can go talk to freely about anything and, and anything I want really. So I just like, I love her for that and I appreciate her so much. Aw, and the gratitude is so yes. sweet. Oh, I hope one day I have a child as good as you. <laughs> Seriously, this is awesome. But what are some like, words of advice or just something that has stuck with you through your years that you've gotten from your parents? Um, I think that, because they always tell me just kind of, one quote we have is, do the work early, don't, don't wait for someone to do the work for you. So kind of just making sure that if you have anything, anything you set your mind to, because my parents are like, one of the biggest believers in that, knowing my mom, what she, what happened with her, what she's been through, to now come in, get, be a nurse and everything, like working night school, kind of trying to take care of us during the day and going to night school, become a nurse, and like it just shows that like you could really do anything you you put your mind to. So I think that's like the biggest memories and the biggest like words of advice that they've given me. Yeah, well I haven't met your other brothers. One of them yes. I have met, and your parents, mm -hmm. and I can just tell. You guys are so dedicated to each other and so dedicated to making it work. Yeah. Like when you said a typical day of driving to the academy, right? Yes. Included your dad or someone driving you there and they would sleep in the car because mm -hmm. that was all the time that they had to sleep. So the sacrifices that they have made to get you to where you are yeah. today and how grateful you are because of that definitely shows. Yes. So it's just wonderful to, to see that and to experience that. Thank you. Yeah, of course. All right, what do you say we head over to Red Bull Arena, Arena, we get back to talking about soccer and all the good things, and uh, we have some fun. Let's go to the arena. Let's do it. So, Curtis, here we are, the last stop of your path to Harrison yes. Red Bull Arena. What is one word that comes to mind when you take this all in? Uh, just future, like my future here, and like I envision myself having like a, a good path and going on to good things here. Future, yeah. I love it. Your future is bright like the sun today, oh, yeah. <laughs> which is bright and beautiful and amazing. I couldn't agree more. Let's talk a little bit about the fact that you are the youngest RB2 signing we've ever had. 15 years, 122 days old, March of 2021. I'm taking you back. Come yeah. with me, Curtis. Let's paint a little picture on what you were feeling that day. I mean, that day was just a lot of emotions and excitement for me and my family because, you know, that's like what, well, like that's like the whole goal coming through the academy is to come in and make your make your milestones. And Rebel Two was a big milestone for me and my family. So, what was the day like? Like actually waking up and signing the contract and then going to bed. Walk me through the steps of that day. Yeah, the night before I was up with my parents. Like, oh, what should I wear? We were all in the same room. Just like, oh, does this look good on me? My mom. I was like, we were all picking out outfits for each other. And then the day of. I don't know, but some reason we, we ended up at like American Dream Mall, like a couple hours before. And then we came straight here, like everyone was kind of emotional, like, like wow, this is the moment that like, we, we've been waiting for ever since that we joined the academy. And, you know, coming in, like I saw them putting like the pen to paper and stuff like that. Like my mom and dad getting interviewed, just watching them, like, it's like, it was a bit emotional for me because like seeing like all the sacrifices that they made for me when I was younger, um, and made me happy that like, they were, they've been through this whole process with me. So uh, yeah, the, those emotions like are ones that I'll never forget. Of course, and how did you celebrate that night? A good meal? Oh yeah, uh, we went home, my mom had like my favorite meal at home, home cooked meal, we sat at the dinner table, ate together, you know, just had like our little family talks, which was great. Ah, oh, what a beautiful day. Yeah. So full circle, such a good like cozy feeling and everyone obviously should be so proud of you. 15 years old, RB2 signed, done. But talk to me about some of the differences, because I'm so curious in knowing mm -hmm. what the main differences were between playing the academy and playing in RB2. Uh, I think just like the growth level, like when I was playing with the academy, I was playing with kind of kids my age, like a year older or something like that. But when I moved with the RB2, it was playing against grown men and like really like the f physicality, the speed of the game and everything. like. I feel like that was what made me go from like a boy to a to a man because it was a difference. Like I had I had to mess up a lot. I had to get I had to get taught a lot of things to be in the position I'm in now. 
Yeah, and a boy coming up with other boys that we are familiar with, Serge Goma. Yes. Let's talk about your experience and some memories coming up with him in the academy and, of course, RB2. Me and Serge have, like, one of my, my closest friendships. Like, I cherish our friendship so much, and, like, we just have so many years going back since U13, all the, all the team trips we take together, sharing hotel rooms, and now, like, making the next steps together. And it's amazing, I think. Serge is, like, just one of my closest friends here. And, like, yeah, like, our families are close and everything. And, like, it's, it was great to have someone that I kind of grew up with and kind of did this whole thing with. It's a friendship that becomes, like, a family. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly, like, how you feel with a lot of the players on mm -hmm. the first exactly. team. So let's talk about some of your goals and some of your plans. You know, I hope to, you know, Break into the break into the squad, become more uh, a more regular player. But you know that all comes with time and patience. Like when my time comes, I'll know it and then I'll be ready for it. But yeah, I just hope to win trophies with this team because this is my my boyhood club. Like I want to do nothing more than just win trophies for the fans and everyone here. Well, we know it and we are ready thank for you, you Curtis. Thank so you, one you. step at a time, and it's going to be a bright and beautiful future for you here at Red Bull Arena. Until next time, I'm Ali Melendez. Curtis O'Forey, we'll see you right here, Path to Harrison.